this is Pillow Kaiser, with another attempt on the whole Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts thing. All right, today I'm going to talk about what I like and what I don't like about this game, and things that they will probably improve upon in the future, but for now they don't have it. Like, let's see, um, when you go to Modern Battleship, let's see, this is just the perfect example. They just don't have it in yet, it's no big deal. Alright, so, if it'll load for me. Okay, I'm so much seeing my monster face. Huh. Safer to use, huh? Is that going to be like a feature where like reliability is a thing? Because I, I'm really hoping that that you see that where it's like the guns jam and stuff. Just like how the hood, wait, not the hood, it was the Prince of Wales. That's the one that, that uh, the guns jammed in the middle of the fight there. But when I look at this, it's only the triple barrels. There's no quadruple barrels. Or the, uh, in one case, I think there was like plans to have sextuple turrets. On like, uh, ironically enough. There, French. A French battleship was going to have that. Don't know if they actually built it. Probably not. But still, the French really liked having low caliber guns on a on a large like battle cruiser. Well, okay, low caliber in comparison to like the other ships that were being built at the time. But you you get my point. Anyway, what are these fourteen inch? Yeah, we're just gonna build a really weird ship. Ooh, yeah, I forgot center line. Anyway, you get my point. Like sex double turrets, they need to be a thing. They, they're just they're they're too much of a, like a thing that they shouldn't be. That they they just really deserve to be in the game. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. Really. Also, this. This tower is so hulking that it's not even funny. Anyway. I still really like this game. It's like it actually takes into account like all the aspects of naval design that matter. It's it's very nice. Like it's genuinely like a really good change of pace to like some games where I don't really see any games that really do that. Like, they really should. There should be a lot more of these types of games. And honestly, it's just like... I think that maybe a game where you design tanks or design your own equipment that your troops use, that's just... It's a good idea to have that stuff. Like, in a game. it's just It seems like such a simple concept that just... It's not explored that much. Like, you see it from the depths... Games along those lines, like... Uh, yeah, like I said, from the depths, there's... They're simple planes where you get to design your own planes, but you don't have, like, troop tra or troop con- like, uh, actual troops you can control on the ground. Kind of like, uh, kind of like a- well, like an RTS, obviously. And the battles in this game, they're exactly like an RTS. Also, this- this game lags a lot when you record it, so, uh, if you have a YouTube channel, be prepared for that. And I am not even gonna try streaming with this- and honestly, I don't know who would watch it anyway, but either way, it doesn't really matter because, well, to be quite frank, this, this game is just really fun and it deserves, it, it definitely deserves to be, to actually be like, uh, have, it, have your money thrown at. There's one problem though, it's, it is $50 to get into the beta and that's kind of a, kind of an ouch. But I can see why, well, one of my friends actually got into this, and it was, the only reason why even I even got it is because my friend got bought into this. And honestly, I don't regret it. It's, it's a good game. So far, all it's missing is, like, actually, like, you know, editing the hull itself. So they have, like, these preset ones for now, I guess. Although I'm sure that the these like base hulls you can probably like change them maybe i'm not really sure what they're gonna do i i hope you can though because this game is just too fun oh 
so the fact that I can't move it any further back than that is kind of kind of not cash money. But all right, let's see here. Um, what if I can put? Th oh no, I can't. Okay, almost, but not yet. Not entirely. This is quite quite the odd design. And all of you probably would agree with that. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is terrible. <laughs> uh, the fact that I can't have like another superstructure is kind of, it's it's strange to say the least. But you know what? It's it's not a big deal. What if I put one here? Side guns, fourteen inches, triple, triple bird turrets. Nope, can't. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that first. What? Wait, why are you? Why are you getting all there? Hmm. Maybe I put a center line one. No. Okay. But yes, I'm. I apologize for the lag. It's just that uh, I can't really help it, sadly, as much as I want to. Also, why is okay, that's weird? Okay, let's see. What can I do here? Uh, I guess I can't put any more on. Why would that be there? Oh. Yeah, this is this is a very good game. It definitely deserves your money. But the problem is, is like, yeah, I can see like the the fifty buck mark is just it's too soon to charge fifty bucks for this. I think. Which is why maybe more people aren't really going into this. Although the naval history fans, they are definitely all over this game. So as long as you can keep that audience, you are you are easily going to keep that. But yeah, since I got the French flag, I, I wanna design I wanna I wanna see what this does in battle. I just I I can't not try this. Let's see here. We got cost. Yeah, the, the problem with this with this whole design stuff is that it's completely cost. I'll make it kind of bore. Yeah, I'll just make it so it's not really as uh, as expensive as it should be. Some heavy shells, standard, super. Heavy. Uh, oh, jeez, that is. It's really increasing the cost quickly, as you can tell. But anyway. There we go. That is all we're going to do for messing around with any of the, these things. So now we're just going to see how much how much speed can we fuck... How many... How much speed can we push out of this baby? Probably not going to be able to do much, really. I think 30 knots is probably the max we're going to even get out of this. So now just kind of mess with the armor, I guess. Although we are very underweight. For uh, what we can play with, so that's not terrible. 17 inches for armor. Maybe do a little bit more deck. There, six inches are of deck. Oh, nope. Can't do any more of that. Anyway, uh, bulkheads. Should we do a little bit more of those? Nope, can't do that. Uh, can we decrease the weight just slightly? There we go. We decreased the cost, cost quite a bit just for that, really. Alright, anything... Anything else I should probably think of while we're on the subject of what they're developing. Uh, well, like I said, jamming, reliability, that should be a thing in the game. Which I'm sure it will, but who knows. Uh, what else would there be? Um, Kind of hard to say, really, at this stage. It's just like it's so early that you don't really know what they're planning. So it's kind of just. Uh, I, I wish they have like dev diaries, kind of like what um, 
Paradox does with all their games. So it'd be kind of nice to try to see what they could, what they want to do, I guess. Because I know they're doing like pre-dreadnoughts all the way to like 1930s era battleships for sure, and they have like you can design a 1940s era battleship already. So I'm kind of wondering what they're doing with that. Like, are they going to make it so you can go into like the World War II era stuff, or is it just like the very early World War II era and stuff, where it like cuts off at 1939? Because already you're al you already have carriers being a thing. So is this going to be like, oh, um, victory at Sea Pacific, but on steroids? Or is it going to be like Total War mixed with like Victory at Sea with like a lot of complex elements that uh, Paradox games are known for with their grand strategy stuff? Like I know that's that's basically Rule of the Waves, except you know you have this. Oh, the Diderot. It's a very strange name. I don't even know what class this is. I didn't even look at that. Probably should get that. Sorry about that. But anyway, there's also another thing I've noticed, and that's the fact that maybe there could be, like, each part could be, like, reskinned to be, like, the French version of all this stuff. So, like, I could see, like, the smokestack kind of looks like uh, from the Yamato. This look whole, like, super structured stuff kind of looks like straight off the Yamato. The turrets, I have no idea where these are from. They look like they could be British. And then the secondary guns, they look like they're Japanese. The triple ones are, they definitely look like Japanese, like, uh, heavy cruiser. Well, I guess not heavy cruiser guns, but you know what I mean. And, of course, like, the, the smaller caliber guns, I have no idea. That could be anything, because World War I their guns kind of, yeah, they don't really look like, uh, what you expect anyway. And we're going to increase this to 10. I, I really hope that the audio goes through and the lag spikes don't just mess with it. Um, anyway, my terrible editing and incompetency in making videos aside, uh, kind of my hopes for this game is that it kind of becomes like Steel Division, but at sea with a campaign map. You know, like how Rule the Waves does. Now, I know this these units have like health bars and stuff and aren't like, uh, what is this, like hull integrity or something where it's like the more of this is down is like, you know, there's more flooding. I don't know if that's the case, but there's also the fact that I want to see like little crew, even if it's just aesthetic purposes, I want to see like crew members walking around. And also maybe in you know, the higher settings you can have like little railings so that way on the side. Because you've noticed that, there's, there's nothing on the side, it's just kind of, yeah. Also I knew that pushing this to as fast as can was because it just can't reach that speed. That's just a speed. Anyway, I don't mind this design. It's not really a good design, but it's still pretty cool. Let's see what we're fighting against. Got like a dreadnought looking there. Like it's not a, it's not like we're facing against people with three dreadnoughts against a what is essentially is a super heavy battleship and Hearts of Iron. I I really like this game though. There's just there's nothing about it that I can say that is really too much of a mark against it. Oh, I like that design now. Like, I wish they had it at the front too, where it's like, you know, one gun less than the top turrets. That's what the Italians and the uh, and the French did, I think, in their later designs. Although I don't know if the Italians actually built theirs. The French did, and the British too. We're gonna have like another one gun in the top turrets, super firing over. Anyway. The top, top 10 little wish list I have for the thing, not top 10, but top wish list in general. I'm not going to number these. Uh, aesthetically, having crew on the decks, if it's possible, do that. And maybe have it so like when an explosive shell hits or something, you see like some crew panel like get blown away and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be that detailed. Kind of like total. It doesn't even have to have blood or anything. 
just kind of kind of gain the fly line, just so that it uh, Another thing, um, make it so the A height's a lot better. <laughs> I know that's probably going to happen regardless because, well, the AI needs it. And not everybody is going to be able to recognize all the ships like in the late, like in some of the missions where there's like 30 ships or more that are on in the field. They're not going to be able to manage all that. Especially with how like, how intensive you need to uh, be with your stories in Torpedo Boats and all that. Anyway, um, there's also the fact that I, um, I'd like to see like the infantry, if there's a tech tree in the campaign, stuff like that. I want to see what the campaign's going to be like, because it's probably going to be, it's probably going to be very detailed, and I'm hoping that's detailed. Um, uh, yes. I'm a good old sunfish, nice Friday, making a video about games. Or make a video on a game that just lets you blow the hell out of ships with your own designs. And honestly, this is the type of game that I wish From the Depths kind of was, but the problem is that man, it's got to be the it's from the depths. You know, it's like it's a lot more realistic than From the Depths in some ways. Not the physical, not even physical, but it's just like oh man. Just, there's so much going for this game. Just now. Alpha, that it's not even funny. Like the fact that you can Kerbal Space Program together a battleship destroyer, torpedo boats, light cruiser, heavy cruiser, protected cruiser, armored cruiser, cruiser cruiser, battle cruiser, and did I say torpedo boat already? Whatever, destroyer torpedo boat too. And of course, like, you know, free dreadnoughts, all the way up to like the modern battleship that would have been that wouldn't have been out of place alongside the Iron Man Commando. Now, all right, let's start with the list here. I already said the whole crew aesthetic stuff. Seeing people on the deck would be nice. It just it doesn't have to be super detailed. Like honestly, it'd be cool to see people with crow's nests or being able to hand flip pick like put like little machine guns on the deck or you know have a proceed based on where you put the parts. Kind of like what you see with the lifeboats. Another thing is if you're going to have at, er, aircraft and carriers, or maybe just carriers carry aircraft that are already pre-built that existed in real life, and you can't see ones because, you know, the Germans aren't going to have very much naval aircraft. You can fit on an aircraft carrier because they only built most of the Graf Zeppelin in real life. They didn't have very much in terms of, like, carrier aircraft. But they had the Stuka. That thing could have probably easily been converted into, you know, a carrier dive bomber. Probably would have did a pretty good job like that. Huh? Anyway, there's also, uh, they're going to do carriers. I'd like to see the seaplane tenders and the, uh, the Zeppelin tenders all the way up to, like, you know, light escort carriers and stuff like that, and have that kind of be kind of a, a process you have to go through, because, like, seaplane tenders, they've existed since, like, aircraft were adopted into major navies. Now they were seaplanes, obviously, you know, the float planes, ever since, like, the early 1900s, all the way up to, like, 1920. And that was the case. The first actual true aircraft carrier didn't, ha like, actually be at didn't really become a thing. It was actually converted into an air aircraft carrier after World War One, Like a dedicated purpose-built carrier. Get to say which one was finished first, the Japanese, or the Japanese one or the uh, the British one. But either way, there, there was like, was it like the Ark Royal maybe? I have like too much a Azure Lane, so no Anyway. The Ark Royal, I know that started out as like kind of a seaplane tender, so it wasn't a true carrier, but then it was converted into a true carrier. That's a very interesting history though. Probably should you should uh, watch the watch the video that Drek Inferno made about it. That one naval history guy. Ooh, the source of all naval history information in a condensed, easy to find 
you know, place that you can just kind of go to whenever you have a question about something. Especially the whole Dry Dock series that he does with uh, his fans where he asks, ask, uh, where he answers questions that people ask. It, it's very entertaining. I, I highly recommend him. Anyway, another thing that you could add to this game is, uh, well, the fact that a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, militaries had to deal with like their political system so like you know begging for funding essentially like in the uh, the Germans Kriegsmarine had to deal with the fact that the army was the primary uh... <laughs> oh look we're fighting Germans <laughs> I see how it is I, I see the, the 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 great fleet is out today uh... Against a time traveling battleship from France. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, the Kriegsmarine in World War II had to deal with a lot of things, uh, like the set fact that the war hogged resources from the surface fleet to the submersibles, and also the fact that, uh, you know, aircraft and other land stuff took more priority. Just like in every military around the world, the army tends to hog up a lot of resources. That's because it's the biggest branch always. It always, it always has more manpower and it's more material. But the navy is just as expensive for how small, in terms of like just men in it are. So I mean that makes sense. There's also the fact that um, you know, the air force is kind of getting to the point where it's getting a lot larger than the navy ever thought will hope to be, but you know, just as important as the navy. But anyway, um, yeah, you you have to like deal with kind of like balancing the budget and making sure that you don't take too much resources from like everything else, unless you're like you know like. United States or Japan or something, and then you don't have to worry about it as much. Because, you know, the Navy is what's going to win you the war no matter where it is. Same with the British. Makes sense. But if you're the Germans, the French, the Russians, the Italians, or the Austro-Hungarians, you can't spend way too much in the Navy, otherwise your army and your air force is going to suffer. So that, has, that should be a feature. And having to deal with, like, you know, a monarch, a republic, a dictatorship, or... You know, some kind of... Something along those lines. Having to deal with those three... I'm just going to boil it down to those three systems, by the way. Uh, you're going to have to, like, figure out how to get around that stuff. Because Congress, for example, during, like, the early 1900s all the way up to, like, the 1920s, they did not like giving the Navy too much money because they kept asking for bigger and bigger things. And it just... They had to build, like, you know, standard class battleships. Maybe, like, two to four every time like a class they wouldn't do it they wouldn't have enough really to do anything which is why like aircraft carriers were slow to develop like be actually be developed because they had such limited budgets and they wanted more battleships because like battleships were the thing they were the be all end all like surface units that were going to win you the naval war or at least win you the battle so that way you can let all of your navy let loose on the enemies everything Anyway, naval strategy and shit aside, uh, this this child this uh, this video is not for children. Kappa, shut the fuck up. Leave me alone. I swear. Fuck, 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 fuck. There we go. Now, there we go. Perfect. Now nobody's gonna something something forty thousand dollars. This is obviously a video game for, I would say, teenagers to adults. Anyway. Uh, Stupid YouTube drama side. I'm probably gonna upload this to shit anyway, because I have no faith in YouTube. Anyway, another major thing would be skins for your parts. Now, I know I already mentioned that earlier, but being able to like have skins for like any of these parts, maybe if you're like having an alliance with like another power and you're sharing out their skins for their parts, maybe they have like small different buffs doesn't have to be that big or anything. it's just like a preference it'd be just kind of nice also hull designs same well you already see in this game how you have like you know an hms dreadnought style hull there's a there's a us dreadnought style hull those you know with the big old oh boy those those big old you know i'll just go show you Let's see, 
design a dreadnought, that's where it is. The power of dreadnoughts, enemy fleet, two battleships, you will build a battleship. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. More fun because America, I guess. Now, America's a rich nation, but Congress tends to kind of stifle funds for the military a lot when it's not really needed, which may, makes sense. Anyway. Oh, pre -trend. Ah, I can't do it. This is the wrong mission. Oh, well. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Uh, we'll do survivability. <laughs> of course, I accidentally thought that said the French class. We know it's an Italian ship, but anyway. Here's what I mean. A uh, nice little thing. Now you can see, like, you know, HMS Dreadnought Hull. Long boy. White boy. USA Buto boy. That's what I mean. Looks like, you know, an old radio tower or like a telegraph wire station thing. Those big old ships. With those big old, what are they called? It's a cage mast. Well, I can see why they call it that. It's a very interesting concept. A little... I, I like it. It's, uh, and this is Italian, of course it is. Uh, okay. No offense to the Italian Navy, I just... I think it's kind of a meme. Uh, Italy does have, like, a slightly unfounded reputation in World War II, though. It definitely deserves a lot more respect than what it, did, what it gets. Because they were effective in some parts of the war. Like, they had some of the most successful cavalry charges of the entire war. In World War II, at least. Now, it's kind of weird to say that. But, yeah, it was a thing. Also, I've noticed that... I do see differences in the turrets every mission. And I really like that. I wish I could just choose between them, though. Might as well make a barbet out of this. Get a good old barbet. One of my favorite things to do is having, like, super firing turrets. And I... What? Maximum amount for what? Why? Am I not allowed to have more? Very strange. What do I put here, then? Put some secondaries, maybe? And some aided secondaries, that'd be... My god, this is gonna look so weird. I, I don't like making my ships too weird looking, though. that's the problem. But if I have to, then, eh, whatever. It'll be fine. Sadly, I can't put another one just for extra meme. Alright, secondary guns. Ah, wait, no, casemates. Gotta have those. Is this just gonna be like a pre dreadnought now? It's a pre dreadnought dreadnought. Oh well, it's Italian, doesn't matter. Oh well. Anyway, this game is, uh. So far, it's really good. I, I highly recommend everything about this. And I hope people will give it a chance. Because. Well, it deserves it, really. There's not really much else to say about it, actually. Besides that, um, if you're a fan of World of Warships, you'll like it. If you're a fan of uh, World War One and World War Two, you'll like it. If you're a fan of just naval history in general, you'll also like it. Um, if you like Cape Kerbal Space Program stuff like that, you'll you're you're just gonna feel right at home. Although, if you're not really into, like, the really slow-paced battles, then I don't know. If you like Total War, you're probably... Oh, well, if you like Total War naval battles, I should say. You, uh... I think you'll like it, because I actually unironically like Total War naval battles. It's really weird to say that, actually. Because I know nobody likes Total War naval battles.
well, I'm not going to say nobody, but a lot of people don't. And it's kind of sad because it's just like it's... They genuinely aren't that bad. At least in my opinion. Let's see how this goes. Ten destroyers. The Kaba class. Huh. Now, for some reason, I feel like I've seen these ships before. I wonder if they were used in World War II, actually, because there's a lot of Clemsons left over that were in World War I. In the American Navy, for one. Let's see how far ass this little baby goes. Another thing would be cruiser submarines, and if they're, you know, maybe I'll design submarines and all that. Because I know that they've said things about submarines. Now, going from coastal submarines to, you know, like the submarines that we know in World War One and Two, and also the cruiser submarines, those whole things that the French made. Now, that would be interesting. Also, the, uh... The, the big submarines that you see in, like, you know, in the Germans designed in uh, World War II. Those would be... Those would be quite cool to see. Just in general. Let's see what you got here. This... This almost doesn't even look like a pre not Like, at all. And I... I guess what that means. I do like it though. I, I like the way those things look. Oh, where are you targeting? No, target the lead one. Oh, it's a cruiser. Maybe. Why is this a cruiser? It's very strange. These are not bad of cruisers. Also, I just realized that the in Anno 1800, the uh, battle cruiser designs in the definitely are not what we would consider battle cruisers in the real like, naval history. Thing. But it really doesn't matter because the uh, game looks fun anyway. Uh, just wait to get it after it's out of the epic games thing. Anyway, let's just watch the fireworks because this thing is already kind of sick. We look at our ship, barely scratched. Oh. Spoke to some little bit. Yeah, that was a really good high saw protection moment right there. Anyway, once we have a ship sunk, I'm gonna stop talking and just kinda end the video right there and hope everyone has a good day. Anyway. So far, I like the game. Everything feels right. Maybe not everything. There should be like a little bit more things I can do, but it's probably because they're focusing on like the normal surface combat, which I mean, it makes sense. It's not. It's not even close to a bad game. It's just still in development, and I am very sure that this game is going to do very well. Also, I like how this is called the Queen. Very nice things. Oh, boy. Other than that, I hope this game does well. I really loved Ultimate, Ad or, um, Ultimate General Civil War. And I look forward to playing Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. Mainly because of the amphibious invasions thing. Kind of hoping that you can assist with amphibious invasions in the campaign in this game, too. I don't have to see it if you don't want to do that. It's directly at directed the depths, by the way. Uh, you don't have to see it on the, on the, you know, on the battle tactical map, but it would be nice to see that. And that way, maybe you can have, like, an able battle at the coastline where... You have to deal with coastal batteries and the enemy ships. Specifically torpedo boats. Because, you know, in the Pacific you've had that. 
where you'd have like a back and drop down, they they bring out like the uh, torpedo boats, like the Japanese one. Sometimes they do suicide torpedo boats because you know they don't like bonsai. But um, there should be things like that where you can do stuff like that. You know, maybe man torpedoes. You don't have to design any of those. Just kind of have them be a feature of the game in general. Because man torpedoes, they actually did contribute on this very very small scale in the war, but they existed, and they did something multiple times, so I think that should be a thing. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna kill the queen. No FBI, that's not what I'm saying. firing so fast, no matter what speed it is, it's kind of nice. Ooh, she's flooding now. Oh, it's just, it's kind of a pretty game, too. It's like, it's kind of hard not to like the looks. Oh, another thing, weather. Weather should affect everything. Just saying. Okay, maybe not everything, but you know what I mean. Like, sight and all that stuff. Because, like, half the battle is just finding the enemy sometimes. And also, she is so about to sink. Oh, she is listing. Ooh, this is, this is great. This is great. Like, you can't look at this and tell me this isn't a pretty name. Look at all the smoke and just the flames just going all over the place. The fact that she's just... Oh, this is... This is so nice. Oh, boy. Just can't take your eyes off this. To be honest, uh, I want to get the point. You have a good day, everybody. Have a nice weekend, and I hope everyone had a fa had good Thanksgiving. You saw their families ate some, ate some delicious turkey. And oh, another thing: oil spills and fires on the water. We need that, and that way we have to avoid them and not have it spread to our ships. But yes, anyway, good day, and have fun this weekend if you're not American. Or if you are, it doesn't matter. Four day weekend. Yay.